Bumper stickers and personalized license plates inscribed John 316 are a common sight on highways across the United States, yes? yes? One can only wonder if the contemporary Christian who proudly broadcasts this heartwarming message for God so loved the world realizes that it reflects only one phase in the life, loves, and hates of the first century Johannine Jesus group. John's Gospel expresses both positive and negative attitudes toward the world. The positive attitude is clear in this passage we have been exploring in this study and elsewhere in the Gospel of John. The Johannine Jesus is actually glad to come into the world, whatever the world means, and we know what the world means. According to, it means the dominant society, Israel, in which the anti-society, the Johannine Jesus group, the Technophayu, the children of God, this, this unique Jesus group that produced this gospel, is existing in as a conscious alternative to, a little island of misfit toys inside the bigger dominant society, first century Israel. So when they mean world, they mean first century Israel. This has n should never be translated. You should never see the word Jews. This has nothing to do with our brothers and sisters who are Jewish. Nothing. Nothing. You put Jew in there, Jewish, Jewish and Jew in there, suddenly you got a, you're, it's rife for anti-Semitism. That, that cannot possibly be the context. We've gone over this many times in class. It cannot possibly be the context of the first century world. There's nothing about the Talmud. There's nothing about Jewish practices. Those all come four centuries later. Okay? The Johannine Jesus is actually glad to come into the world. This is one of the positive senses of world that you find in John. John 6.32, so Jesus said to them, Amen, Amen. You know what that means, right? Amen, Amen means, I'm not lying to you. I put myself under curse. Even though I don't owe you the truth. Yeah, I'm going to give it to you. And in order to be sure, to guarantee that I'm doing that right, I put myself under penalty of divine curse if I, if I tell you untruth. So Jesus said to them, Amen, Amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from Sky Vault. My father, my patron, gives you the true bread from Sky Vault. John eleven twenty seven. 27, Martha said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world, the dominant society Israel. Indeed, the Johannine Jesus is the light of the world. John chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus said, Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. He's saying this to Israelites. John chapter 9, verse 5. Jesus said, while I am in the dominant society, Israel, I am the light of the dominant society, Israel. John 12, 46, Jesus said, I came into the dominant society, Israel, as light, so that everyone who believes into me might not remain in darkness. I'm going to give you, the, the, you want me to just show you how the anti-language is very versatile and works there? What is darkness a synonym for in Johannine anti-language? It's Israel. I came into the dominant society of Israel as light so that everyone who believes into me might not remain in the dominant society of Israel. So where do you go? Well, you have to join this ethnically Israelite Johannine Jesus group. This is the Johannine Jesus. Okay, so, you know, Sergio and I, we have a time machine. My friend Sergio and I. I didn't tell you this, but I'm going to tell you. It's very interesting. Not really, but okay. So we get in our time machine, and we like to go back to first century, uh, you know, uh, Mediterranean world. I just hang out. And we go to this, we have a favorite bar uh, in somewhere in uh, uh, modern-day Turkey. And it's a wine bar. And so we go there, we're drinking our sweet wine, and we're listening, trying to, you know, work out the Greek and stuff. And there's two guys there. And they're having a big argument. 
Turns out one of the guys is the guy we named Mark. And the other guy is the guy we named John. The authors, there's two evangelists here. And they're getting into the most god-awful fight. They're talking about this guy named Jesus. Jesus. And you know what's funny? The Jesus that each one is talking about is, 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 is completely different than the other. In fact, neither one of these two guys recognizes the other guy's Jesus. At all. Isn't that interesting? Okay. And you know what? The Holy Spirit works in that mess, folks. The light of the world, Jesus, the Johannine Jesus, willingly became human and pitched his tent among us. John chapter 1, 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us us the fullness of a gift that is truth we notice the insider outsider language we have gazed upon his doxa glory glory as of the only son from the father but it isn't all rosy and positive as positive as these passages are to the world there is a negative attitude that the Johannine Jesus group has for the world. And it's actually far more common in the text we call John. The world refused to receive Jesus. John chapter 1, verse 9 to 10. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the dominant society Israel. He was in the dominant society Israel. And the dominant society Israel came to be through him, but the dominant society Israel did not know him. I'm just giving you what the code means. The world is basically at odds with the Johannine Jesus. Johannine Jesus is light. Those that get with him, believe into him, are enlightened. Those that are against him are in darkness. in darkness. John chapter 16, verse 20, Jesus swears a solemn oath to his disciples. Amen, amen, I say to you. You will weep and mourn while the dominant society Israel rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will become joy. John 17, verse 14, Jesus prays to his Father, I gave them your word, and the dominant society Israel detached from them, rejected them, hated them. Because they do not belong to the dominant society Israel any more than I belong to the dominant society Israel. John 18, 36, Jesus answered, He's talking to Pilate. My kingdom does not belong to the dominant society Israel, to this, this world. If my kingdom did belong to the dominant society Israel, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Judeans. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. The world is basically at odds with the spirit of Jesus. John 14, verse 16 to 17, Jesus said to his inner group, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, a parakletos, to be with you always. The panumas tas alethi alathias, the spirit of unforgetfulness, the spirit of truth, which the dominant society Israel cannot accept because it neither sees nor knows it. It's in darkness. How can it see? And how can it know? But you know it. You're enlightened. Because it remains with you and will be in you. Yes? This is pre-pascal Jesus. When you hear Jesus talking in the Gospels, it's always got a little bit of stage three. So it's supposed to be pre-pascal Jesus, but nobody had a tape recorder with the pre-pascal Jesus. <laughs> 
And everything pre-Paschal, pre-Paschal Jesus, the Jesus before the death and resurrection, right? Everything pre-Paschal Jesus said and did has been reinterpreted because these people have experienced Jesus as risen Lord, the sky Lord, the sky, the, sky, the Lord of the cosmos, cosmic Lord and Messiah, soon to come and inaugurate theocracy. It's funny, this Johannine Jesus group doesn't care about theocracy. They're not waiting for theocracy like the other Jesus groups. They already experience it right now in a different way. Right. We'll have eternal life. Not have eternal life someday. If you join the Jesus group, you have it right now. It's in you, into you just like you're into Him. Just like He's into the Father. Right? Okay. John 16, verse 8 to 11. And when he comes, this is the advocate, the paraclete, he will convict the dominant society Israel in regard to sin, shaming God, dishonoring God, and righteousness, right action, and condemnation. Sin, uh, shaming God, sin, because they do not believe into me. Righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will no longer see me. Condemnation, because the ruler of this world the ruler of the dominant society, Israel, Satan, has been condemned. Wow. You really don't want to put the word Jews into this text, ladies and gentlemen. Can you see why? This is not, this is, and by the way, historically speaking, this is, he's not talking about Jewish things at all. At all. He's talking about the dominant society, Israel, which existed at the time. That's a, it's not... It's the root of a lot of things, a lot of traditions. About the phrase, and, when he comes. and when he comes. In other words, when he's revealed through the John Hyde Jesus group to the dominant. After Je when Jesus is lifted, when Jesus is lifted up on the cross, he breathes on the woman and the beloved disciple, the spirit. You get the spirit immediately, even before he dies. Then he dies. Then when he comes, as, as is risen, he gives, he gives the breath that night. We don't have to wait 40 days for Pentecost in this community. We get it right away. Then he gives it to Thomas the next week. You get the Spirit right away. So how do we know we have the Spirit? Well, let's see. We're, we're seeing Jesus in this community in the first century, end of the first century, regularly and routinely, more so than all the other communities which see him too. We're experiencing the risen Lord all the time. He's descending and descending and descending from Sky Vault continually in their meetings. In all what we call, what anthropologists call alternate states of consciousness, religious tradition calls visions, shamanic visions, and they're experiencing him through the senses. Western people have a problem with this because Western people, according to cultural anthropologist Arthur Kleiman, are the most, uh, they are the group of people that are the most resistant to ASC. Even though all brains and nervous systems are capable of 35 plus different states of consciousness without smoking anything or drugging or doing anything dubious. Okay? We are capable of experiencing holy and absolute mystery through over 35 different states of consciousness uh, experiences. Ours is the one that is most likely to block these because we have a meta-self in our individualistic introspective lives it's constantly commentating, uh, commenting on everything we do and all the time. It's a control mechanism to keep us safe. We're living a step back as we go through life to protect ourselves, to protect our, our vanity wall, to protect our egos, to protect our introspective meta-self, see? To protect ourselves. It's like, a, it's like living a life in an envelope. So that unlike indigenous peoples, unlike Middle Eastern peoples, unlike uh, the poor of the world, okay, who can't afford that. That's one way, and you'll be starved in the 1960s, 50s, and 60s come along, and you'll have a drug craze when you're introduced to jazz and rock and roll and all these things like, oh, my God, why do the blacks who are going up from you know, New Orleans up on the Mississippi River up to Chicago 
they're playing and all these white kids want to go over there right and listen to that ragtime and listen to that jazz and listen to that blues because there's something about it it's the what's happening is their sympathetic nervous systems are getting stimulated and you notice in the 60s and the 70s suddenly when the when the Catholics come into the Sun Belt, right, when they move in, suddenly we're getting all this music, Christian, uh, non-denominational Christians, Baptists, Pentecostals, and Catholics suddenly are adopting all this rock and roll because it's just too tantalizing for us Western people because it tends to make us just, you know, and then, of course, drugs come along with that because, we, you know, we're so extreme in this culture and we're starved that we seek these experiences out in ways that actually damage us through horrible means like drugs. But these are actually common to all human beings on the planet. Okay? Just the Western world. And when we experience them, we think we're weird. Right. Uh, sh we, we dismiss it. That uh, was... We tell our closest friends, I have this dream. I have this dream. If that. <laughs> if that. If that. In fact, the world positively hates Jesus and his followers, the Joanna and Jesus group. John chapter 7, verse 7, Jesus said, The world, the dominant society Israel, cannot hate you, he says to his brothers, but it hates me because I testify to it that its works are evil. John 15, verse 18 to 19, Jesus said, If the dominant society Israel hates you, realize, his disciples, now he's talking, Realize that it rejected me, detached from me first. If you belonged to the world, then the world would stick love, attach itself to its own. But because you do not belong to the, to the dominant society Israel, and I have chosen you out of the dominant society Israel, the dominant society Israel detaches itself from you, hates you. John chapter 12, uh, 16, verse 20, Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, amen, I say to you, you will weep and mourn while the dominant society Israel rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will become joy. In response, the John 9 Jesus determines to judge the world. John 9, 39, then Jesus said, I came into the dominant, this, this society, this Israel, dominant, this world, for judgment so that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. John 12, 31, Jesus said, Now is the time of judgment on this dominant society, Israel. Now the ruler of this dominant society, Israel, will be driven out. The Johannine Jesus determines to judge the world because the sons of darkness live in it. John chapter 12, verse 35 to 36. Jesus said to them, The light will be among you only a little while, you Judeans. Walk while you have the light, so that darkness may not overcome you. Whoever walks in the dark, continues in the traditions and society of, of Israel and its temple, does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe into the light, me so that you may become children of the light, members of the Johannine Jesus group. The Johannine Jesus pros prosecutes the world as its judge. John 8, 21 to 29, Jesus said to them again, I am going away, and you will look for me, but you will die in your dishonoring God. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Judeans said, He's not going to kill himself, is he? Because he said, Where am I go I am going, you cannot come? Sounds like Nicodemus, right? He doesn't get it. He said to them, You belong to what is below. I belong to what is above. You belong to this dominant society, Israel. But I do not belong to this dominant society, Israel. That is why I told you that you will die in your dishonoring God. For if you do not believe that I am He, you will die in your sins. If you do not get with the Johannine Jesus group and come out of the dominant society, Israel, you're going to die shaming God, dishonoring God. You can't, but you can't help yourself. You, you have to do that. That's your nature. 
That's what darkness does, and ignorance does, and death does. Death dies. So they said to him, who are you? See? In darkness. Jesus said to them, what I told you from the beginning, I have much to say about you in condemnation. But the one who sent me is true. And what I heard from him, I tell the dominant society Israel. They did not realize that he was speaking to them of the Father. So Jesus said to them, When you lift up the sky vault man, then you will realize that I am he, and that I do nothing of my own, on my own, but I say only what, my, what the patron, what the Father has taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, because I always do what is pleasing to him. Later, the paraclete will carry on the formal trial and convict the world of false righteousness, false judgment, and submission to the devil. John 16, 8 to 11. Jesus said, and when he comes, he will convict the world in regard to sin and righteousness and condemnation. Sin, because they do not believe into me. Righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will no longer see me. Condemnation, because the ruler of this dominant society, Israel, has been condemned. Hey, thanks for watching. Just continue the playlist for the next part of the study. If you have further questions, this is good. They will get addressed, so keep watching. If you found value, please subscribe, like, and share. As always, Questions, comments, and criticisms are most welcome. God bless you.